Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5, in module 4, we are working on lesson number 10, and that means that tonight we are comparing and evaluating expressions with parentheses. So let's take a look at parts of three problems from tonight's homework and see if that can help you with yours. Let's take a look first at problem number 2, and I'm going to do a part of this problem. Problem number 2 says, circle the expressions that give the same product as 6 times 3 eighths. Explain how you know. Well, you know, one of the things I'm going to do first is I'm going to figure out a little bit more about 6 eighths. So I think on the side here, I'm going to say, well, this is, I know that I can multiply 6 times the numerator, and that will give me 18 eighths. Let's see, that's written really poorly. Can I try that again? All right, let's try 18 eighths. So 6 times 3 eighths is going to be 18 eighths. And I just know, actually, I can skip count here. I know that this is going to be, this amount is going to be somewhere just above 2, right? Because 16 eighths would be 2, so this is going to be a little bit more than 2. Um, so I want to circle the expressions that give the same product as this and explain how I know. So let's take a look at this one. 8 divided by 3 times 6. Well, I know that we have to evaluate that parentheses first, so this is 8 divided by 18. And 8 divided by 18 is just this, right? 8 divided by 18 is 8 eighteenths, and that is nowhere near this. So I know that this one is not going to be the same. Um, and I know it because, and I can write this in a sentence if you'd like, but uh, I know that because uh, it does not come where anywhere near uh, 2. This is some fraction between 0 and 1. Now let's take a look at this one. Hmm. 3 divided by 8 times 6. Well, 3 divided by 8 is 3 eighths times 6. And hey, 3 divided by 8, or 3 eighths times 6, is exactly what this is. In fact, all, the, all we've done here is switch the order, and we can do that in multiplication, because multiplication is commutative. So I think we're going to circle this. We're going to say that this is exactly the same. Because of commutivity. <laughs> Commutative power. Right. So that one I know for sure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these next four for you to figure out on your own. I figured out the first two. Um, but I'm going to leave that after, since I figured out that this one is exactly the same, that this one gets the same product, I'm going to let you guys figure out the other four of this problem. Let's take a look at another problem. Number three asks, write an expression to match and then evaluate. I'm going to do two, 3D. Two-thirds the product of three-eighths and sixteen. Hmm. Well, let's see. Two-thirds, two-thirds the product of... The product of 3 eighths and 16. Is that right? So first we take the product of 3 eighths and 16, and then we take 2 thirds of that. Huh, interesting. I'm noticing that we could do this again in any order we like, but I'm going to solve this one as efficiently as possible. I'm going to say, hey, let's divide both the numerator and the denominator. Let's see. I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to say that this is the same as 2 times 3 times 16 all over 3 times 8, right? Because we could multiply all of these pieces together, 2 thirds times 3 eighths times 16, and get this big mega fraction. And I'm noticing a couple of things. One is that if I divided the numerator and the denominator by 3, I could just go, right? And get 1s there. That's awesome. I'm also noticing another common factor, which is that if I, multi if I divided the numerator and the denominator by 8, we could divide 16 by, two, by 8 to get 2 and 8 by 8 to get 1. And now we have a much simpler thing, right? We have in the numerator 2 times 1 times 2. What is 2 times 1 times 2? Well, 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 times 2 is 4. And how about in the, in the denominator? Oh, we have 1 times 1. Oh, of 1. So it's 4 divided by 1 or just 4. And presto, we've evaluated this very complicated uh, multiple fraction product by just noticing these common factors and getting rid of them first we have we've gotten this all the way down to just four that's fantastic awesome let's take a look at one more problem from tonight's homework we're going to use the less than greater than or equal to to make true number sentences without calculating explain your thinking ooh so without calculating now that's a challenge let's see 
I'm going to look at this one in 4b. I'm noticing that 32 divided by 16, well, that's just 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, and 4, plus, 4 times 6 is 24. But over here, I'm noticing that I have 12 plus some number, plus looks like 2. So I think I can tell that this is going to be bigger. And one of the reasons I can, it's because if I look at how they've regrouped this, right, over here, they've come up with a sum, and then we've multiplied every part of that sum, the 2 and this other 2, times 6. Over here, we have 2 and 2, but only this 2, right, gets multiplied by 6. This one just gets added in. And so this has a lot more going on with for it. This, the 6 get, gets multiplied times both parts of the rest of the number, or the rest of the product. Um, and this one, it only gets multiplied times one part of the sum. So I'm pretty confident that we could do the calculations, and it would be, and the left side would be greater than the right side. Right side. Oof, the right writer side. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Good luck with your homework. Take care.